Colette, yes. Hello, this is ACDC, Eric Sully and Colette, the Dynamic Change. And I'm now, I, uh, my name is Eric Sully. I'm a Transition Wealth Advisor, and I work with professional women to rearrange their finances. And uh, today we have a, a topic just about that, which is very interesting, very close to my heart. Uh, but let me introduce my uh, co-host, uh, Colette. Colette, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Good, good morning, evening, afternoon, whenever you're watching this. Yes. Uh, my name is Colette Rabba. I am a residential real estate broker. I like working GTA West. Um, currently, my clients consist of single people, uh, families, uh, couples, people who are going through separation, divorce. So I, I, I would love to have one demographic, but you know what? We all need a place to live, so I can help everybody but my, uh, my criteria is uh, GTA West. So I hope that helps. And as you, I'm sure uh, if you've watched any of the, these, these episodes, uh, Araceli and I really like to talk about the combination and the marriage, let's call it a marriage, that we think finance and real estate go hand in hand. Finance touches everything. And really the biggest uh, question that I always have to uh, get through to my clients is what are your finances like before we even start looking? How much can you afford? How much can you borrow? And that's why Araceli and I always like to talk about these things so we can help you, the viewer, get uh, the information that you desire and that you actually really, really need before you yeah. go and invest. So, so this, take it away. This episode is basically knowing your finances before you start a real estate investing business. Super important. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories so you can relate and you know where I'm coming from because in this story, it's kind of gave me my aha moment a little bit of what is actually needed to it. Colette, have you ever gone to a mall for a, an appointment? Let's say you're meeting someone for a coffee and you've never been to this place. You don't know how busy it is, how much time it is. You're running a couple minutes late. You go there and now you can't find any parking, right? Okay. So you go around and I'm, my God, you know, you feel very stressed out because this is a very important meeting and now you can't find any parking. It's so busy. Right. Now, as soon as you find parking, oh my God, yeah. Now you're so far away from the door, right? To, to, to walk away. I really, I, you, I think I'm liking this analogy. Yeah. And, you go, and, and then you get to the door and guess what? My God, now I got to go to the bathroom really urgently. Right? Or I forgot my mask. Or I forgot my mask that. and I have to go back to <laughs> Exactly, right? So all of these things happen. So you get in the mall and now you see this big billboard and it says, you are here. And now That's you're cool. looking for the bathroom and it says, oh my God, now I don't know how to read this map. I don't know where the store is. Sure. And you continue to do that. And then you finally get to the washroom to just find out that this washroom is under construction. And guess what? Now you're going to have to go and look for another one. And then you finally find one. And guess what? Now you lay for your appointment. I that peed person my pants that, already. That you're looking <laughs> yeah, that's it. So the plans got all messed up. Yeah. So where am I going with this, right? That yeah. when you have a plan, does it ever turn out the way you want it? There's always something that you don't expect, right? Like the traffic. Absolutely. like the yeah. uh the parking that you cannot get that yeah. you forgot your mask in the car that now you have to urgently go to the washroom and then you go to the washroom spend the time and you can get to yeah, it there's because always it's, obstacles there's always obstacles. there's obstacles. And things that we can't we're not it's not in our control correct and yeah. the reason for it that i think most people can sort of relate to this that this happened in one way or another is that that's what a plan is you think that you're going to do something but you didn't think about doing something else that is going to consume time and guess what money right but it's also the the other thing i think that's what i was thinking that you were trying to get at was that don't let all these obstacles get in the way of your of your goal correct so whatever your goal is you know you use a planner in this sense or you, you have to plan in advance like you know you can always show up early you can always uh you know take transit you can always but there's always going to be you know in your analogy yeah. there's always going to be something that might 
get in the way. And same thing with investing. And I'm going to let you continue in a minute, mm -hmm. but that's a very good analogy. I like that because a lot of people, when they have obstacles, they just give up and say, okay, forget it. I, I give up. Exactly. And then, you know, back to square one, nothing has been accomplished. So if that's, you know, my nature using a financial planner, like talk to me about that. How, how can you get through all these obstacles? Yeah. So, well, exactly it. So you see, there's many, many obstacles that you don't know where you're going to encounter. So right. You do a plan and the majority of plans are very streamlined. So you go from yeah. A to B and there's nothing in between. Right. Yeah. And that's how a financial plan can help you. Or I just say, here you go. Take, take it all. Here's all my, you know, you, you figure it out and then tell me what to do. And I, I just, I don't know what to do. Is that what, is that the better way to do things? Well, that is a way to go, but it'll be more expensive. And I think that everybody has to be responsible because at the end of the day, I cannot tell you what you're spending, right? You're still responsible for selecting. I'm going to give you a few, a few things that I, I go through my clients with okay. to just make them aware. And that is not very difficult, right? Okay. So the first thing that most people know, and I always tell them, know your numbers, know your financial position. It's kind of like that little dog when you see at the mall, it says, you are here, right? And then, then we can plot out where you want to go. And now we can say, okay, we have to go right, left, and so on, right? And it's going to well, take- Well, but you also, long. not just I'm here, but I want to get here. So exactly, it's, that, it's the two things that you need to have at the same time to say, this is my goal. I really want to get here, but I'm here. How do I do it? And with your help, this is, I can't do it by myself because I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how to get there. So I love the analogy. So, so there is a few things that I do with my clients first. Obviously the, the very first thing that, you know, a lot of financial clients don't do, depending on what it is, but I'm just going to tell you what I do is to get your network statement. And a lot of people don't concentrate too much on it because they say, I don't have a lot. But it's overwhelming but we, too. But it's not it's, about that. It's yeah. about having the ability to know where you are if you don't have a lot then is that what you want you want to have more then you have okay so i need to put more into this category and basically your network statement will tell you what you're worth if you would sell everything and you would pay everything okay but this is the interesting thing too see for me i think my network statement is going to be in the toilet but in actuality, when I think about it for a minute, I probably have, what's that commercial? You, you have more than, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have more money than you think or something like think, that. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing with the financial, like, don't be afraid of, of looking exactly. at exactly because the worst case scenario is that you actually have concrete proof. This is what I have now today. And you shouldn't be afraid of it. Even if it's low, it's something. You know, exactly. You got your first. You got your first step there. You know that dot on the map. I'm here. Yeah, exactly. So basically, for those who don't know what a network statement is, that you tally up all what your assets are, and your assets are your property. Maybe you have a boat. Maybe you have an exotic car that is very, you know, very expensive. Maybe you have a motorcycle. What uh, about what about art and other things that might art, be valuable, furniture, like furniture? All of those things that have a, some sort of a value and it's continued to appreciate. You have yeah. a painting that is worth a thousand dollars that you know it's going to continue to appreciate because it's from a, a famous art. Uh, collectibles, collectibles, collectibles. Are a big thing, and and also like any any stocks, bonds, like we're, that's what we're talking about, right? R yeah, it's stock bonds, your RSP, if you have any pension or work, all of that, it's part of your assets, and what then about you. Do, what about rich boyfriends? Does it that count? Ah, uh, no, that you can put it on the liability side. <laughs> <laughs> you don't so, actually own them. You just yeah. like hang out with them. <laughs> That's right. No, that doesn't count much. Oh, so. darn. Okay. <laughs> and then you tally up your liabilities. That means everything that you owe. If you have a mortgage, that's how much mortgage you have. Do you sure. have a student loan? Do you? Uh, have a line of credit that you have. You have credit cards that have a balance, right? Do you have a personal loan, uh, maybe to your mom or your uncle or anybody that have given you money that you're making some payments? Yeah. Because that will give you what commitments you have. 
this will give you a, basically a positive or a negative number. Yeah. If you are in the positive, that means that your assets are value more than what you owe. And that's basically what you want to get at, right? In right. some cases, you start having more liabilities than what your assets are. And that's okay because at least it'll give you an idea of where to begin, right? To start tackling down debt. So that is one of the first thing. And this is just a really big overview, okay? Because, you know, I want to expand more um, in future, but this is basically what you need to know. The next thing that I work with clients is to know what is your lifestyle cost? And I think we touched that before. And I don't think a lot of people are very familiar with this term. But lifestyle cost is basically another term for your budget. Right. right? right. And I call it lifestyle cost because the amount of money that you pay for mortgage is not the same amount that I pay. Or maybe you're renting instead of owning. So you have property taxes um, if you own a house, but you don't pay that if you are renting. However, maybe you have a very expensive membership for, I don't know, a golf uh, club or something like that, that somebody else doesn't. All right. of that at the end of the month will amount to something, which is completely different from somebody else, right? So your mm -hmm. lifestyle, so that means the way that you like to live cost has an, a number, right? And yeah. we have to determine what that number is. Right. With that, we move into something that is called a cash flow management. Because sometimes having the enough money, let's say that you make you know, $5,000 a month and you are spending $4,000 a month. So you should have basically $1,000 extra a month. Okay. But sometimes your cash flow is in such a way that you're paying things in the wrong order and therefore you're always kind of running short, right? Okay. And that is kind of like a big, uh, the big way to say it. Uh, I, I don't want to go into much detail because I will go on forever. It, it, and it's it, different right? for everybody. It's, it's different, different for everybody. everybody. Yeah. So sure. the cash flow management to me is one of the things that I like to work with clients because it gives them a sense of where they are, how much money they're going to have, especially if you're self-employed. It's super important because okay. it'll give you kind of like a debt, debt date and where you are going to run out of money. Okay. Um, so that, yeah, those I'm all, are basically the yeah. steps, right? That yeah. I like to, and why do I say all of these? Because if you know this, it will allow you to make different decisions and you're not making decisions on the spot. You're right. making decisions as a business owner. And if you don't have a business per se, treat your life as a business. Well, yeah, I was going to say like, even right? we, we, the, the subject today is about uh, you know, knowing your finances before you buy any investment. But this is the thing. It doesn't have to be real estate investment. It could be anything. And, and really, and I, you and I both agree that uh, we should be investing in our own businesses and in ourselves. So, you know, because we're both entrepreneurs, we're both, um, uh, you know, sole proprietors, really, we, we're investing in ourselves, not a certain thing like a property or RRSP or whatever. All of this is under this umbrella of mm -hmm. me, right? So I think that's important for everybody to know that, like, you don't have to be thinking, oh, I want to buy a property one day, but set a goal for yourself. And it could be about retirement. It could be about a vacation. It could be a different kind of goal. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a business and it doesn't have to be a, a piece of real estate. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times, because those things are such a big uh, monetary value, we do have to plan and we do have to strategize. And that's what Araceli is saying. Like before you do any of that stuff, you get your net worth statement. I've been writing it down. Yay. Statement and then cash flow management. Very, very important. Am I am I good? Yeah. yeah. And then you forgot your lifestyle cost. Okay, sorry, I gotta so, write it down. Yeah. yeah. So the lifestyle cost, so the net worth statement, your lifestyle cost, and your cash flow management. Um, yeah. From there, now you're going to have to decide whether it's, is your income enough, right? Because if you are spending more than it's coming in, then basically you only have two options. Either increase your expenses or increase your income. Right? Or a little bit of both. 
or both yeah sure. exactly so yeah. you can find a balance and this is a really good place to be because for someone like i'm, I'm working with someone that just started a business and we went through all of these and uh, she was saying to me as as well i think that if i had that this many clients i'd be really good and then when i did the analysis i said no you need this many clients in order to kind of just cover this it says oh my god i didn't know that right so you right. gotta understand what that number is right because that it allows you to make decisions for your business for what you're buying with what you invest in yeah. all of that takes uh you take it from there so in any business as you see like anybody that is going to make any financial decisions you know the big boss is going to say give me the report right give me what, what what our finances are before i can make a purchase you have to think that way in your life right even you're if the you, big if boss you don't have, you exactly have you yourself. are the boss right and <laughs> your lifestyle will be um according to what you plan in your in your business which is yourself right or and that's how i make people think this is your business this is your life what do you want is right. this in alignment to what you want to accomplish right can i, can I ask you a question yeah. let's say you are engaged to be married or you're mm -hmm. living with someone and 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 you have you have all of this worked out and you have your goals and your significant other has their his his or her goals how do you um what what's this what's a good like is i want to say i think it's a very good idea to both be on the same page as far as your goals and if your goals can align with one another i think that's ideal but what do you say to your clients who say hey listen you know this person i'm with has no goals, they don't have any idea, they don't want to buy anything, but I do. What do you, how do you manage that? Well, the first thing that I always say to people, you know, before you even engage anybody, just talk about how do you manage your finances? Because everybody has a different personality, right? And then some people, they just say, you know what, I want my significant other to take care of it. And that is what their personality is. But at the same time, even though you're going to give control to somebody else, you need to know what is happening. Right. So the first thing is to align the core values because you're never going to be exactly the same or you're never going to be in alignment fully of things that are important to you. Let's right. say, for example, uh, you get together with somebody that has a financial commitment with another spouse, right? So. Sure. Or they that have money, a business. Like exactly. They, they, they may have a business or a yeah. job, yeah. but they have already a financial commitment to their kids, to their ex-spouse, right? And that is going to take away from the money that is coming into the new relationship. So you have to be just honest, first of all, to see this is what I have to give my, my ex-wife or my ex, you know, or my kids, right? To take away from what is coming into this house what else are you bringing into it like right. do you have a, a property yourself right uh do you have any investments properties or any other uh things so my uh, my go, go ahead my question or my point to all that is if you are in a relationship with someone i'm saying you have to have that conversation before you actually get married or become a uh, um, common law because what happens is you inherit their debt absolutely vice versa and also they or you inherit their their property so this is a very sensitive thing that i really like to share with people because they think oh hey you know we're having fun we're gonna live together and then three mm -hmm. years later this you you have half their debt if you want to separate with them you could be in real financial trouble or you could have half of their assets too. Exactly. Like so I, I really think that, you know, people, I think a, 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 people. Frank, a frank and honest discussion uh, up front. And that's what is important for you to know where your own financial position is. Because if you come in and you don't know where you are, you might actually don't remember or don't think about that this something is important to right. share with somebody else, yeah. which in my opinion it is. Like sometimes I work with people that are going to be married and we put together a goal. Okay, so how do you want to work this 
do you want to make a, a joint account where you're sure. going to be paying the common things? Are you buying a property together? What is it the relationship that you want to have moving forward? Because if you are creating new assets, you're buying a new property with someone, how do you want it to be split? Right. right. How do you want it to be? How the commitment will be? It's a so very, that is very, very important to know up front. Yeah. And it's a very legally binding relationship at this point now. So oh, even, yeah. let's say, and it doesn't have to be spouses. It could be you and I. Yeah. Let's say you and I have the same goal. We're like, hey, let's go buy a property together as an investment. And then this and this and this happens. Maybe I want to fix and flip. Maybe you want to have a, a long-term tenant. We have to be on the same page as this. So it's not yeah. just spouses or um, you know uh, people who are common law or, or getting married it also has to do with the partnership and where do you want to be financially yeah so I think that conversation really has to be said yeah when you go down that road and make sure you get your legals your legal exactly your that is correct but that is kind of like another subject that we can go into more yeah, yeah. <laughs> in another episode but right. I want to end this with is when you have your network statement, your lifestyle costs, your cash flow management, and your debt date, like when you're running out of money, then you have a very powerful things to make decisions, right? Uh, because if you don't have those, sometimes you get yourself into commitments that are not going to be able to happen, right? Right. So um, just like your analogy about going to the mall and not finding the parking spot and being late and having, uh, I think uh, whenever I look at investment properties, I always have a plan B or even a plan C and a contingency okay. plan. And that contingency plan is your buffer. Yes. So, I, you know, I, I don't know how much you're supposed to have in this kind of contingency plan. Let's say you, you lose your job or let's say uh, somebody gets sick in your household and you have to stop working. This is what I mean by a contingency plan. So hopefully you talk to your clients about that as well. Absolutely. An emergency fund should be between two to six months, whatever your lifestyle cost is. So if you spend $4,000 a month and if you want to have a minimum of two months, so then you should have a minimum of $8,000 in your bank account at any point in time, right? right. If you're going with the six months, uh, I, that's what I like to do, uh, then you would have to have $24,000 at any point in time. So that is 4,000 coming in and maybe a little bit to add to that, right? Right. Uh, to always have that balance. In okay, order to so have that. my last question. Mm -hmm. How much do you charge all, for all of this in great information to set someone up with the net worth statement, with your cash flow, with your lifestyle costs? How, how do you charge for something like that? If I say, Aracely, you're hired, mm -hmm. help me. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there, there is a couple options here to go with, right? Um, I always give someone a 30 minute consultation, which is just, I, I will ask you some questions. Where are you? What do you, so I, it gives me an idea of how much work I need to do with this particular person. Right. Okay. And then the second thing is I want to know what is their commitment to work with me in some cases. Uh, and when I'm saying working with me is having to manage their life insurance, their investments, their RSPs and so on. Uh, I get paid from companies to manage those investments. Now, if this person decides that it says, no, I, the only thing that I want is I just want to uh, go over this. I, I don't, I don't need your right services. Path. You're right. Yeah. So then that is a consultant a fee. Okay. And it depending on, on that 30 minute consultation, what is it? Uh, I can assess. I says, listen, I think that we're going to need probably two to three uh, one hour session. So then I will give you a package of three sessions, right? And okay. each one is one ninety nine for those that want to do that, right? And but if you are uh, going to become a client, so you know it says, listen, if you give me a good plan and I'm happy with it and I'm you know okay with you managing my finances, then this consultation that includes all of these that. It's worth about a thousand dollars, right? Right. Uh, of my yeah. time to do this with you, then it'll be included. Wow. With it, so awesome. so you can go 
both ways and you know I'm, I'm happy to do either either yeah. one but I have seen tremendous success by you having all of these in line uh, to get to a point because then it'll give you an answer can I right. invest this when can I buy this you right. know am I able to do this well and it takes like it's all about the so so for me this year it's about simplicity because I have a lot of moving parts in my in my life and you know i don't know if that's the same for a lot of people out there yeah but when you have investment properties you have your work you have your kids you have all this other stuff that you're you know this peripheral you don't just have a nine to five job even if you do just have a nine to five job yeah um tr trying to figure out everything of where the money's going what the kids are spending what they need how much is your uh you know monthly payments stuff like that like that's a general idea of what you have and where you, you know, what you, you're spending, but how to get there, how to get to the goal is very hard for somebody like me because every day is a struggle. Every day is, oh my God, you know, what do I have to do about this? What do I have to do? It's troubleshooting. It's putting band-aids on, mm -hmm. you know, finding solutions for things in my life and to give my finances to someone else to say, here you go. You know what I have to do? Tell me what I need to do this is my goal. Is it realistic? Is it not? How long is it going to take me to get there? Yeah. I'd happy, happily pay someone to help me with that. Exactly. And, you know, I have been working with, uh, with someone for uh, actually quite a number of months. Yeah. Uh, she is a client and we have made such a big a big leap from where we started, right? Okay. And I'm telling you, uh, when I came in, you know, and I'm not going to give you a lot of details about it, but um, she says to me, I, I do feel that I'm uh, out of control. I have a lot of moving parts. Uh, uh, this client has a business and then she's managing another rental with family and so on. And there is a lot, a lot of moving parts, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, in, in her life so it's when we started working I just felt that she was kind of scattered like of you know course. everywhere yeah, I, and I she couldn't that. really figure out like tunnel vision right like to right. go into that and she was avoiding it and she told me I says listen I was avoiding it for the longest time because I really didn't want to look at it's it it's scary right? it's scary to it's really very very scary I think finances you. is one of the things that for everybody hits the spot right in some way or another and when you know that you trust that person to help you, right? Because I'm I'm not there to judge you. I really don't right. care what you have, but I do. You know what I mean? In well, the you sense want that to help people with their goals. I mean, that's why that's absolutely. the same thing with me. I want somebody to, to buy the house of their dreams, but if, if they can't afford it, I have to, you know, be the bad guy to say, hey, listen, you know, it's not up to me to show you 500 houses at a million dollars, but if I know you only can afford 700, you're wasting everybody's time and it's exactly. just exactly and i think it's for it's, you. In, it's in your best interest to know what you're able to do because then you are more powerful in the decisions you go Absolutely. there and you can negotiate better right yes. and it, it gives you such a a relief that where am i right and how long is it going to take me to do this right yeah and yeah. then we can concentrate on what areas, like if you are in debt, right? Why are you there to begin with? How can we remediate that problem and put a plan together to stop it? Because right. to me, like, it's just like a doctor, stop the bleeding first, right? And then start fixing the problem. So oh, that is that. the yeah. very first thing to do. And it just seems complicated. And that's, I think, why a lot of people don't like to do it. But with me, it is very easy. It's very simple. And I'm walking you through. I just ask you questions, right? And I know you still have to get used to the idea and have a commitment because you do have to make a commitment to say, I want to know what my finances are and I want to be in charge of them, right? And yeah. I'll be with you all this all the step of the way. But at the same time, the commitment is both ways, right? Right. And well, this is the, the other thing too that I want to say. There are people out there that have like a big pot of money and then they don't do anything with it because they're so terrified. They don't know where to invest it. They don't know what to do with it. And they don't know how much they will need for retirement. They won't know how much they need. Possibly their kids are going to go to school or something. 
So this is why the financial plan is so important. Even though if you have a lot of money, if you have a little bit of money or no money, exactly. you still need that plan. You still need that I'm here dot and I want to get here. Exactly. So the, the, you've made a, an excellent point because I've heard people saying, you know, I'm going to hire you when I have some money. No, 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 no. This is kind of the opposite. Like it's, it's the chicken or the egg, right? That right. kind of thing. And I think that, you know, I've heard somewhere that what you concentrate on expands. And if you do have, even though your sheet, your network statement say, maybe I'm zero or I'm on the negative, then you have something. Okay. So where am I concentrating on? Right. I, I concentrate on paying my debt. Am I concentrating on acquiring more assets? Right. I'm or concentrating on getting more go? income. Yeah. I don't want to stay at zero. I want to get to over there. Get me everybody, over there. <laughs> everybody is in that boat, but you need to know where you are because then you're kind of shooting in the dark, right? Like, okay, maybe this will do. Right. Stop, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. No, why would anybody, you know, that's, that's what I keep telling myself. I'm like, what are you, what are you afraid of? What's the, what's the worst? I am who I am. I have what I have. Exactly. I have a goal and I really want to hit that goal. How do I do it? And I'll work really, really hard. Um, I hate to say it's like weight loss. I know people give up. <laughs> on losing it's weight exactly the same it's, thing, right? It's not going to be this immediate gratification thing. You have to work hard at it, but you have, I'm here. I want to get here. This is my goal. How do I get there? Help me. That's why people have personal trainers too. You are the personal trainer of finance. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, like, you need all this motivation and somebody that has been there and they know what are the pitfalls, right? Because we always get into this mode. Oh my God. And I'm, I'm telling you, I know that because in my search for, you know, losing weight, sometimes you get disheartened. Oh my God, I didn't sure. lose any weight this week. Yeah. Right? But the I, other thing, actually, I have to say one thing too about, yeah. about weight loss. Stop looking and find it. So it's the same thing. Stop looking at what everybody else has or stop looking at how many, you know, oh, this person that I'm following on Instagram has lost like 500 pounds. Like, don't, don't compare yourself to anybody. They're yeah. in a different position that when you, you know, when you started what how they started, how you started, how I started, yeah. we're all different. We are all unique. Don't get overwhelmed by, oh my gosh, I'm not losing fast enough, or I'm not, yeah. uh, you know, making enough money or I'm not. I'm, exactly. spending, I'm spending whatever shit happens <laughs> you know, we, all, we all have and we all have our falling off the wagon moments not just with diet but with finances too yeah. and that's okay that's why working with somebody yeah. like your will will say hey it's okay just don't go crazy and you know spend all of your savings <laughs> like stop the bleeding right yeah stop the bleeding that is a very good analogy i think the two things and i think it's hard because just like weight loss you don't have immediate gratification like buying a tv or eating that cheesecake stop eating the cheesecake yeah you can have a bite okay. have a bite of the cheesecake but stop the bleeding don't eat the whole cake yeah exactly so those are things that are hard because they're habits and just like eating the same with finances, if your habit is not looking at your finances, of course, you know, you're never going to know what is going to happen. Right. But if you start changing the habits and make it enjoyable, making you in charge of where you are and making the decisions that you need to make, because I always say money touches everything. So even if you're buying that coffee in the morning, can you make that decision? Is that the right decision for your goals, right? Right, right. So all of that is very, very important. I'm, I'm super passionate because I've seen what it does to people. Yeah. And believe me, most people start afraid. Oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this. This is too much. It's I fear. Hear numbers. Uh, it's, fear. it's just so fear. But yeah. I am there with you and I'm showing you. And believe me, I've seen people changing like saying, Oh my God, you're going to be so proud of me. I think that that was the last time that I, I talked to this client about. And she said, oh, you know what? I got all of these done and I did it all my, by myself. And she was so excited. And I, I was so happy, right? That's awesome. Because that That's is wonderful. what I like to see, that people change their mind about, instead of being afraid of finances, embracing them and having a, a goal and saying, oh my God, I'm doing it. And I'm just 
killing it right yeah and don't be afraid like that's the thing same thing with weight loss if you don't lose the 10 pounds or whatever like don't be afraid of it if you really are consistent and you stay with it just like your finances, it will happen. It will, it may take you a little bit longer. You might have, you know, those moments where you do fall off yeah. the wagon. Yeah. But yeah. It's something that you just get back on and, you know, you continue on and, and sooner or later it will happen. You have to be patient with yourself. I think that's my biggest problem is, you know, I, I, I'm in The majority of us are, and this society is, is built on immediate gratification. Take a look right. at all the stuff that is online. Take this pill and you're gonna drop 10 right. pounds overnight. It's or just, buy a lottery you. ticket and you'll be a millionaire. Like it's exactly. that easy. Then all of us would be doing it. Exactly. So the thing is you have to be realistic with yourself, know yourself, and put a plan in place that it is enjoyable realistic. along the way and realistic. Yeah. Enjoyable and, and the same if yeah. you want to get into real estate investing, the same thing. As soon as you know what your finances are, how much money you have extra. At right. the end of the month okay so if you're going to designate all of that then you know that it's going to take you maybe a year before you can actually put a down payment and in that year what can you do in order to make it happen a little bit faster sure. maybe you can get a little bit of a gig right that it's going to yeah. give you a little bit or more find money. a partner it doesn't you don't have to find do a it partner yeah but you have to be like-minded so that's the same thing with any any goal that you have if you have a group of people that support you even just, you know, to talk about, even just to share, like, this is the thing that, this is why Ursula and I like to get together too and talk because we're very like-minded and we talk to each other about, hey, what do you think about this deal? What do you think about um, this property? Yeah. And, and we just talk about it, even though we might not buy it together, mm -hmm. but it's something that I want her to succeed. I, you know, I know she, she see, you know, we both want to help each other succeed. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that you have to remember is, even if you don't partner with that person or that other person doesn't become your client or anything like that, there is enough for everybody out there. If you I make agree. money and I make money, the money's not gonna go away. There's a ton of money out there to make and also properties to buy, anything, businesses. It's just about, I think the interactions, the relationships and what is it that makes you feel? How do you yeah. feel when you're doing something? And that is the most important thing that I think money will bring you peace of mind and a really good clarity about what your direction is. Right. So that's it's what fire. I really, it's, like it's, you it's don't it's have fire. to hire me, but find someone that can help you go through this steps sure. and that can guide you through making it part of your life. This is what is most important. I can do your network statement today, but if you don't use it, it's not going to make any difference, right? Sure. In your life, right. you have to be able to use these tools. These tools are there for you to give you clarity and to make directions and changes and decisions of where you want your life to be. That is pretty much all there is. You have to have them and also implement them in your life that is meaningful to you, right? So that is, do you have any other questions? Well for? said, no, I love it. I, I do want to win the lottery just to be. Yeah, so do I. Universe. Please, universe. <laughs> I already have a plan for it. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like, I'm not going to go, you know, spend all my, all my savings on, on that you magical tickets, right? maybe, so. you know, I, I'm, I think I'm doing things that I'd like to think that I'm, I'm on the, on the right path. But you can always use somebody to to look at your finances and say, okay, yeah, yeah absolutely. Do and don't don't be afraid. Believe me, I've seen it over and over again. People that are just you know very flying very by the seat of their pants. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And don't do it. That is even worse than trying to get together with someone and get and organized. coming coming from me, who I am like the overthinker. Don't do that either, because then you'll never move. Then you know, exactly. You have to jump, even though it might be very scary at some point, it might be, you might be full of fear, but mm -hmm. when you have the right people, the right um, professionals yeah. behind you, you can be confident. You can feel better about your decisions because there's somebody else there with you. Exactly. So, exactly. And yeah. it's always having a, a, another set of eyes to go over what you think it was going to be good, right? Just give Absolutely. you a couple more options, a couple more questions to ask. Right. The transaction, whatever, just ask a few I'm questions. I'm here. 
Yeah. I want to get here. Yeah. Help me. Yeah, that's right. So it's very simple. The process is simple, but remember you have to get involved. You have to make sure that you know that you want to use commit. the tools yeah. to get better. You got to so, commit to something. And yeah. that is pretty much uh, kind of like the process I wanted to go through because this is super, super important. If you have that pat down, your life will change. Believe me, I have many, many people uh, telling me and I've seen it firsthand. So that's what I encourage you. Don't be afraid. Just jump in, do it. Um, and if you get stuck doing it by yourself, just give it's me a free call. consultation. Yeah. It's a free that's consultation. Right. You have nothing to lose by calling her Sully. Yeah. So yeah. So Thank you. This is awesome. Today. So I feel I, like I, rah, rah, rah. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> exactly. So I think that uh, I like inspiring people to, to just take that by, you know, the horns. Yes. And it's it's easier than you think. And yeah. Uh, yeah. if you do it's confidence, you're building yeah. your confidence. At the very least, you're building your confidence. And everybody could use that absolutely the more confidence you have you'll be able to show up better for whatever you're doing right and so with that we'll let you go and we're gonna see you next week with another interesting episode so please tune in thank you i feel energized thank you for that that Great. was awesome thank you colette and uh just send us your questions if you have anything that uh we didn't cover today about uh financial planning how to get started uh, just send us a quick question, okay? Yeah, and We're just do it. Answer. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Nike, just do it. Anyway, Happy thank you week. for joining us, everybody. Yeah, bye, Colette. Next week. Bye. Bye.